Now, look at this picture. According to the House Ways and Means Committee, standing alongside Hunter Biden at that press conference was California lawyer Kevin Morris, who was asked to speak to my first guest this morning under oath, but has yet to do so. He claimed he would be overseas at this time. In fact, he's there in D.C. Joining me right now in this Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, Congressman Jason Smith. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for joining us this morning. It's great to be with you, Maria. So I want to go back to this picture here, and I want you to confirm who this person is. We are told that Kevin Morris spent millions of dollars to try to help Hunter uh, paying back his taxes and helping him live this lavish lifestyle. Did you, in fact, ask Kevin Morris to come talk with you and what took place? That's exactly right. That's Kevin Morris. It's pictured alongside Hunter Biden. He's an individual that has came up repeatedly amongst the IRS whistleblowers that came before our committee of an individual that we need to bring forward and ask questions to. We've been working with Kevin Morris's attorney to bring him in, but they told us that he is out of the country on vacation between Thanksgiving and New Year's. However, it sure doesn't look like he's out of the country. And what's so important for us to get to the details there is the IRS whistleblowers um, have highlighted where Kevin Morris paid almost $2 million of Hunter Biden's taxes, plus an additional almost $3 million just to subsidize Hunter Biden's lifestyle. What's also important is these IRS whistleblowers released an email from Kevin Morris to Hunter Biden's tax preparer three weeks before Super Tuesday in 2020, saying that they must pay these tax returns or there will be great political risk. The only political risk is Joe Biden. And that's exactly why the IRS whistleblowers wanted to look into campaign finance crimes into Joe Biden's campaign. But the Justice Department has refused to do that. So let me look at this picture again. So you're saying Kevin Morris is standing next to Eric Swalwell because Eric's yes, uh, representative Eric Swalwell set the whole thing up, giving him space so that he could speak outside the Senate side of the Capitol. So Kevin Marsh, you're saying, is in the middle there next to Eric Swalwell. He's a Democrat donor, right? He, he paid off, you said, $2 million of Hunter Biden's unpaid tax liability in 2020. And he wrote that email saying we have to pay these taxes, otherwise there's political risk. How long did Kevin Morris know Hunter Biden? What's the relationship here? From what the IRS whistleblowers have highlighted, that they just got to know each other about two months before he paid roughly $2 million of Hunter Biden's tax returns. But he had been known as a, a big Democrat supporter and donor, um, Hollywood attorney. The question is, is why would Kevin Morris pay almost $5 million for tax tax filings and also to subsidize Hunter Biden's lifestyle. What is Kevin Morris getting from Hunter Biden or from Joe Biden? These are things that we need to look into. That's amazing that uh, Hunter Biden could go defy a congressional subpoena, set up shop right in front of the steps of the Capitol, do a press conference with the guy who's helped pay all this stuff out uh, and then walk away. <laughs> That's it. We're not getting your deposition. <laughs> Maria, if you or I or any other American would do that, we would be prosecuted. It's clearly a two-tier justice system. It's exactly what the IRS whistleblower, whistleblowers have highlighted, why they came forward. The fact that Hunter Biden was supposed to be in the halls of that building going through uh, a congressional subpoena through depositions and he defied that by standing on the footsteps of the capitol and doing a press conference uh, the fact that he is the president's son and he's doing that is creating a very severe constitutional crisis so are you going to follow up on this the fact that kevin morris's people told you he was unable to give you any time he couldn't come to talk to you because he was overseas between thanksgiving and new year's and then there you are you watching him on the steps of the capitol with hunter biden right under your nose in washington 
We absolutely are. It's just it's just not adding up and they're not being honest for how they've been communicating with us. He was supposed to be out of the country from Thanksgiving to New Year's. That's why he couldn't come in for questioning. But clearly he was not out of the country. But this is this is just a pattern that we've been seeing throughout this entire investigation. You have Joe Biden saying that he knew nothing about his son's business dealings. We released the IRS whistleblower testimony. And then the next day they started to say that he was not involved in his son's uh, business dealings. However, just this week, Hunter Biden's in his press conference says he was not that Joe Biden was not financially involved. Well, let me tell you, the emails and documentation we've been getting from the IRS whistleblowers prove otherwise. So tell me more about the impeachment inquiry, where this goes. You had an, uh, an uh, unanimous showing the GOP all voted to formalize this. What does this get you in terms of what you're calling stonewalling from the DOJ? Will this break the stonewalling or are you still going to get blown off by Biden's DOJ? Maria, the fact that every single Republican, 221, voted for this impeachment inquiry shows that the evidence that's been coming forward between Chairman Comer, Chairman Jordan, and myself and these IRS whistleblowers highlight the need to a continue investigation. And that's, in fact, what we're going to do. We've seen this White House continue to block and stonewall subpoenas that we've had, witnesses to come forward, documents that we've requested, and by having the this official impeachment uh, inquiry vote, we're able to be able to use additional tools to get this information. There's a lot of information that we need to get, Maria. There's folks at the Department of Justice, the FBI, the IRS that needs to come forward, answer questions, but there's also documents and tax records that we need to be looking at. I want you to talk a little about some of the evidence that you have with regard to Joe Biden specifically involved, because I know that uh, according to the whistleblower, you've got uh, hundreds and hundreds of, of different instances where you've got emails between then Vice President Joe Biden and Hunter Biden's business associate, Eric Schwerin. Was he the one who set up all of those shell companies? Why would Vice President Joe Biden be communicating on email one on one with Eric Schwerin? What do you have in that regard in terms of evidence? You know, just two weeks ago, the IRS whistleblowers gave us the documents of 327 different emails that came from Joe Biden's fake alias accounts from Joe Biden, either to Hunter Biden or his business associates. In fact, just 54 emails alone of Joe Biden just to Eric Schwerin, who's the architect of the 20 plus different companies that that they have used to funnel millions of dollars um, through foreign entities. Entities. That should disturb anyone. But what's even more alarming is in the year of 2014, when Vice President Biden took three different visits to Ukraine, you saw emails just right before and just after with, with the Vice President and Eric Schwerin and also Hunter Biden. Five emails before the June meeting, 27 um, before the November trip to Ukraine. This, this, this shows clearly that there's communication and involvement in Hunter's business activities and also official activity going to Ukraine. Now, the cover-up by the DOJ is also a big part of your investigation in the Ways and Means Committee, Mr. Chairman. Tell us about that. What evidence do you have that, in fact, the DOJ is covering for Joe Biden? We've had the IRS whistleblowers testify that in their 10 plus years investigations, they've never seen this kind of obstruction. For example, the Kevin Morris piece that we were highlighting, clearly the IRS whistleblowers thought that they should in be investigating Joe Biden's campaign because they believe that there's campaign finance crimes that have been committed. But you had the Justice Department that that stopped that. You also had numerous leads that led to President Biden that they were um, interviewing his brother. And in the interview, they were told under no circumstances could they ask any questions about 
Joe Biden. We've seen where they were going to do a search warrant and they were referring to political figure one and political figure one was Joe Biden. But the Justice Department said you have to take that out under any ordinary investigation. Those IRS whistleblowers said that they would continue to follow those leads. But it happened to be Joe Biden. So they were not allowed to follow those leads. Wow. This is incredible. Um, You have told me that there are instances where it looks like there was government action around his family being rewarded. And I wonder uh, where the government action uh, was. We want to know if there were policy changes being made and Joe Biden was pocketing money to make those changes. I know back in 2013, there was a memorandum of understanding that then Vice President Joe Biden signed allowing thousands of Chinese companies to trade on U.S. exchanges and not follow any accounting rules, not follow the SEC rules that all public companies have to follow. I wonder if he was paid for that. And I also wonder if when he first got into the Oval Office and canceled the China initiative, uh, was he paid for that? You've identified other areas with regard to Ukraine, like the prosecutor being fired. Can you talk to us about policy changes you know he was paid for? You know, that's what we're doing in this impeachment inquiry is following the facts. But you just highlighted, Maria, several examples. There's almost there's actually more than 20 different countries where we've seen some kind of business associate with Hunter Biden and foreign entities. President Biden said that his son had not received or his family had not received any money from the Chinese. According to documentation that's came forward um, of bank records, we know that that is no longer true. There's money coming in from all different entities. We've seen it from Ukraine, Romania, China, all of it. Um, We've also seen numerous examples where it appears that Joe Biden was using Air Force Two as a corporate jet traveling all over the country and meeting with Hunter Biden's business associates. That's unacceptable. We also know what happened in Ukraine where the prosecutor was fired at the demand of Joe Biden because that prosecutor was investigating Burisma, which his son was setting on the board of Burisma, getting paid millions of dollars. Hmm. It's all it's all not looking too good for the Bidens. All right, we'll keep watching that. By the way, there was a, a tweet that someone pointed out to me, $1 million that Hunter Biden's Chinese partner, Patrick Ho, wired him back in 2017. It's been the subject of a separate bribery investigation. Uh, and, and it wasn't legal fees as claimed because Hunter was not even licensed in New York. Anything to say about that? You know, this is just another example where when we bring in individuals from the Justice Department, they say it's an ongoing investigation, so they're not supplying us with the answers. Congress and the American people deserve to get to the bottom of the details to see if this administration, in fact, is obstructing obstructing the investigation of their own son and themselves. Mr. Chairman, we're going to be following your work. We so appreciate your time this morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Maria. Have a great morning. And to you, House Ways and Means Committee Chairman, Congressman Jason Smith.